that was a close call in case you're wondering that wasn't us hello everybody we are at Adirondack snowmobile rentals near Lake Placid New York as I mentioned in the prior video we could not find any snowmobile rentals by Lake George because a lot of those places were closed due to mild weather. We even tried booking something in Vermont and they and our reservation got canceled because it was just too way too warm to get on the trip. Very happy that we found this place because even in Lake Placid the weather has been very unseasonally mild. So a lot of places were not operating even this place they couldn't offer a full tour so they usually have like a two hour tour around the on regular trail system and it takes you to the lake and a lot of beautiful places but at least they were still operating on their own property so it was, it was like a short, shorter version of this tour which was about half an hour to 30 minutes to 40 minutes or so it was still fun as soon as you start off on the trail we noticed that there's not much snow on the ground so some of the some of the tree roots and rocks are exposed so you have to be extra careful you can't go as fast here but it was still enough snow to have fun and enjoy ourselves I think I'm, like I said I was very glad that this place was still open they have a very nice property there's even the creek going through it so you get some of the uh, winter wonderland experience here This trail does wave a lot, so you have to be very careful because if you are too close to the person ahead of you, you could crash into them accidentally. You don't want that to happen. And they do have different groups going through this trail, so, so sometimes you just have to stop and let them go. But it was kind of nice to actually make a stop here and take some pictures and enjoy the views of this winter wonderland. I know if you ask locals, they'll probably tell you this is not the amount of snow they usually get around this time of year. But if you compare this to what we have by us on Long Island, this is actually a lot of snow for us. It looks like a winter wonderland. It's a perfect spot to take some nice pictures. Those particular snowmobiles are definitely newer and much faster than the ones I've tried in the past. So you do have to take it easy in the throttle a little bit because otherwise you can really take off. This tour was definitely on the shorter side, but it was great time. I can only imagine what it's like taking the regular two hour tour they usually have in the main trail system. It must have been a lot of fun. But like I was saying before, because of the mild weather, they had to close the trail because of the dangerous conditions on it. Basically what I found what they were telling us, the uh, a lot of different uh, parts of the trail, that, that because the snow was melting, things were exposed. So it, it made it a little dangerous to get on there. But you know, I'm glad we were able to enjoy this. I think it was it was awesome. We definitely worked up an app inside snowmobiling. So we found this co coffee bar, which was right in uh, Lake Pla town of Lake Placid. It was supposed to, according to the Google reviews, supposed to be right on the lake. So we'll see. It should be a nice place. Parking is definitely a little challenging here, but we found the spot. And we are at the coffee bar, and the biggest surprise that we saw outside the window, unlike Lake George, the Lake Mirror, which is right next to Lake Placid, town of Lake Placid, is actually frozen, and people are playing, playing. You know, I see kids playing hockey over there. And what we sold there in the distance are the dog sleds. They were actually still had them going, which is, I think, yeah. finding that coffee bar is the best thing ever because we weren't sure how far the dog sledding will be from every, all the other places we had planned for today. But I think uh, since it's right next to our lunch spot, we'll be able to do it. After lunch, we made our way down to the lake, which was a little tricky to find a path to come down, but we found it, which I'll tell you about a little later. But it was amazing to see this frozen lake, which we haven't seen anything like this by us probably since like 2018 when the lakes are f and the sound was frozen now this is probably one of the few places that actually does this outside of Alaska I haven't found found too many of them by us and the best hi, hi, hi. part they do it right on the lake so that kind of gives you a nice uh, fun winter experience 
those dogs are definitely loving their job. As soon as they tell them to go, they're, they're going. They just take off. And they are going relatively fast. So we have three adults in here, and there's a guy in the back who kind of guides the whole experience. And he has a break just, I guess, to slow them down when they go a little too on the faster side. But they seem to have no problem pulling us. This is totally different than I've, from anything I've done before. Being pulled by the dogs on the sled on a frozen lake and enjoying this beautiful scenery around me on the mountaintops and the snow and of course that cold fresh air just makes the whole experience. A lot of you probably say, why would you do this rather than go on a nice, beautiful vacation, some warm place? Yeah, I'm sure I would enjoy that too, but this is different. I think something you would want to at least experience and try once and then see if you like it. ride I would most certainly definitely do it again because this was such a great ride and it's just again I don't keep saying it but it was totally something I've never tried before one thing to keep in mind the ride is $20 and they only accept cash and this dogs this dog is retired but he still wants to run with them just like I promised at the beginning of this, we're going to show you how we actually get to the lake. We're going to try to get back on the main street. So to get back on the main street, the shortest path we found from the coffee bar is actually to walk in through this nice hotel. So you got to go up and use the elevator, and then you got to go through the hallways, and uh, it'll take you right on the main street. This hotel by itself is actually a very nice place to visit. They have a lot of interesting uh, a lot like air places here. Some of the doors of the rooms have signs for people, for famous Olympic athletes who stayed here. The lobby here is pretty amazing. It overlooks the lake and just the whole theme is pretty, you know, it's pretty cool. And now back up to the main street. For those of you who don't know, Lake Placid was home to U.S. Olympics in 1932 and 1980. And in 1990 and 2004, they had a Ski. jumping World Cup. So on the left here, this is the Olympic Museum, which I'm sure served as a center during the, during the Olympic Games. This building also has an ice arena inside of it. This museum includes a lot of items from Olympic Games. Here, historic footage from 1932 Olympics that were hosted here at Lake Placid. And this is most recent Olympics from 1980. And we're on to our next destination, which is an Olympic bobsled experience in Lake Placid. Mount One Humberg was a site of Olympic Games, Olympic Winter Games of 1932 and 1980. The track itself is about a mile long, and you could actually get up to speeds of 92 miles an hour. Fortunately, all the bobsled rides were sold out for a day, so we just came by here to enjoy the view. Looks like they had the mountain rider sleds in the morning and now they switched to a single ones. They go by so fast. I'm definitely wondering how hard is it to break at the end of the trail, how they actually break. And here where they awarded their uh, winners during the Olympic Games, first place, second, and third. Bob sledding was a lot of fun, but we are off to our next destination, which you see in the distance, Whiteface Mountain. It's a beautiful natural wonder, located not too far from Lake Placid. 
Now, when you enter the this place, it looks just like any other ski resort we've been to. There's a lift, there's a cafe, and there are places to rent skis and snowboards. But once you get on that scenic gondola ride, you realize what kind of experience this mountain is. Now, Whiteface Mountain is about 4,800 feet tall. If you go all the way up, now, we're gonna go to the overlook, which is about 3,600 feet above the sea level. So we're gonna be a little lower. So look, what, I, what I'm seeing here is, so the skiers start at the highest point, and there's the, there are two different lifts they actually take you there. The gondola only takes you to to the uh, lower section, I'm, I'm assuming, which is uh, 3,600 feet up, which I think that's where the, most of the snowboarders start from. you go the more you submerge in this beautiful nature surrounding you definitely a lot more snow up here and it feels like the wind is picking up so it does feel a little colder even being in the gondola you feel it I can only imagine what it's like outside I guess we'll find out in a little bit If I knew how to paint, I would have probably tried to paint one of the scenes around here. to the top so we're, and those are black diamond trails oh, here diamond. so they are not by any means easy trails and what we heard from some of the uh, snowboarders here it feels like it's endless Whiteface Mountain is a beautiful and inspiring peak it's certainly famous for its panoramic views and pristine natural surroundings the view of the mountains is truly a sight to behold but up here it's just the feeling is hard to describe honestly first of all you kind of submerge into this wintry weather which you didn't experience down by the entrance so it was around 40 degrees out there here is actually feels like about 10 to 6 degrees fahrenheit it's not warm at all by any means so you can't really stay too long without moving and the wind chill makes it even worse or colder but the views that you, you, you see from here, I think definitely worth the trip and, and the part of the freezing part. Was, I personally was amazed and it's 
I have not seen anything like that before. You could you could see pretty far away from here. You can actually from some of the one of the summits you could see the town of Lake Placid. The other side actually extends all the way to the Green Mountain of Vermont. I think being on this this high peak is definitely inspiring and amazing. Something I think one of the places that you must see if you if you visit the area. I personally would want to come back here in the winter because again, it's just something we don't get to experience by us on Long Island. So you get this beautiful winter winter scenery, especially when you come down with this gondola. You, you see this on this this those snow covered trees and other mountains and the road in the distance. It's just remarkable. Now, coming down on the gondola, we did experience a lot of strong winds, and being on the, you know, suspended on the cable, you do feel the gondola shake back and kind of goes back, going back and forth. I, you know, I'm very curious how they built this whole line, the structure for the gondola to be operating, because they went up all the way to 3,600 feet with this particular one, and I don't know how they, you know, how they built it, how they maintained it because it's very windy here and I'm sure they have to inspect those cables quite often but I'm glad they did because we can you get to enjoy this beautiful ride and the views that come along with it it's kind of hard for me to decide if I liked the ride up or ride down better I think both of them are equally amazing I guess the ride up was a little more mysterious because you didn't know what to expect. As we make our way down, we're no longer surrounded just by nature and we see a lot of people here. It's, this is, those are, I think, more of the beginner trails here. And you see, it's pretty packed. There are a lot of people at this resort. And now I know why. And just to summarize this adventure, I think White Face Mountain is a true wonder of nature. It's natural beauty and unspoiled wilderness. Once you get to the top, it's just an amazing destination. And I think it's a great way to experience the majesty of the Adirondacks. Nice, thank you. Now we're going back to the town of Lake Placid. And we're going to pass some of the Olympic Village area here. This is in distance. You see, that's the Olympic ski jump. Believe it or not, but some of the buildings in the Olympic Village were actually, I actually used as a correctional facility. And there was a large amount of locals who were not happy about that conversion, so there were, there were some protests, as, as I learned. Um, unfortunately, a, most, a lot of uh, buildings that were used for Olympic Village at this point are abandoned. They're not used by any other, for any other means. And it is kind of sad. I wish it was like, a little more preserved and as a historic site. But who knows? In years to come, it might happen. But the town itself is 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 a nice. It's actually a good-sized town. It's a big town. There are a lot of shops, restaurants, places to have coffee, as you saw earlier in this video. Or we'll just walk around. There's some nice parks around and like areas just to kind of just to kind of enjoy the nature. There are also a lot of hotels around too. And now we're actually going to the other side of the town, which we didn't get to see earlier this morning. And I think we see there's another dog sledding ride actually taking place here, which is nice. They have like a two different sides of the lake. And we're in front of the monument dedicated to the Winter Olympic Games of New York State. Well, I hope you enjoy our adventure as much as we did. I think at this point we gotta head back to Lake George because we got another an hour and a half ride to get back there. If you like this video, please share, like, subscribe. This way more people could see our content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.